for our service this morning. I have a number of things uh, here to go over. Um, announcements. I only have one announcement, and Shirley has a, a piece of furniture that she needs to transport down the alley from the church sometime this afternoon, preferably after church if possible. So if anybody has a truck that they could bring uh, here and help her uh, get that, I think it's a couch that she needs loaded up and taken down the alley. That's the only uh, announcement that I have. Brian, do you have anything? No. Okay. I do have some joys and concerns. Um, Kimmy's family needs some health concerns overall. Her niece for some health concerns uh, in eating, uh, and uh, Donald Tennant for some health concerns as well, a friend of theirs. Um, Phyllis is asking prayers for the Lynn, for Lynn Ann and family, a, a person that she works with through the school system. They lost their home in a fire uh, recently, so uh, please prayers for them recovering from that. Uh, Tess said that Julia, her granddaughter, is doing well, um, and Christina had some negative test results from her tests, so that was good as well. Um, Phil's brother had some bi bypass surgeries, recovering from that, and Tessa's brother also has some health concerns she'd like to have prayers for. Um, let's see, Barb Seaton says thanks for all the prayers and uh, rides that she received while she's getting her knee uh, rehabbed. Uh, she seems to be doing very well and getting about quite well for that. Uh, Clara is back with us this morning. She had her own little health hiccup this past week, but we're glad to see that she is back with us this morning. Uh, and that is all that I have this morning as we continue with our service. Oh, one more joy. We have bulletins. <laughs> I do want to make two quick things uh, that just occurred to me. One is uh, there was a, a book that was given to me, a book of pictures for my going away. And I think that's actually next to Tasha. Um, I, I was uh, requested to bring this back because not everybody was able to sign it. So if you haven't signed it and you would like to, it's up here and uh, feel free to do so. And secondly, I would just love to give thanks to the entire congregation for its uh, generosity. Uh, for me and my family, the last four years, uh, and it's interesting time, because to be your pastor. And uh, the, the celebration that we had on this uh, Sunday was just, just wonderful. So I want to thank you all for
If you're able, would you please rise and join with me in this morning's call to worship? What mysteries there are in God's world, we so sophisticated stand in awe at the wonders of the natural world. We look at the tiniest of seeds and wonder what will happen. From that small seed, the world will crush Although we consider our gifts to be small and insignificant, God will use our gifts in miraculous ways. Praise the God of small seeds and mighty God. Amen. Let us now join together in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Mighty God, to you belong the mysteries of the universe. You transform shepherds into kings, the smallest seeds into magnificent trees, and hardened hearts into loving ones. Bless us with your life giving spirit. Recreate us in your image and shape us to your purposes through Jesus Christ. Amen. I have one more prayer request. This week is our annual conference uh, that we do the work of the church. And so keep the people that are representatives of the church uh, in your prayers during this annual conference time. Our opening hymn this morning is number 393, Spirit of the Living God.
Let us now join together in our affirmation of faith. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his work, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in the time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love, as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end, that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And I'll have our children's moment. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. So, guys, today, I want to talk about change. What kind of changes do you have going on in your life? Like, okay, we're just moving into summer. So, we're changing from spring to summer. Sometimes, what other changes do we have? Do you. With school, sometimes you have new teachers, right? Or we'll have But you know what other change is happening right now in our place? Uh, that we're not Pastor Brian is not going to be with us anymore. That's right. So we're going to have a new pastor. Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, turning is Pastor Chair. So he'll be starting in a couple weeks with us. But this Sunday is our last Sunday with Pastor Brian. But so I thought it would be important for us to talk about what that, what we can do, you know, with this change happening, right? I mean, change is going to happen all the time, and it's important that we keep moving forward and we're positive and we're hopeful for the future, right? You know, it's like when we read a book. So I have one of through this chapter book here. When I get to the end of a chapter, do I just stop reading? Or do I turn the page to the next chapter? Yes. Right. We keep going. We don't just say, oh, I really like this chapter. So I'm just not going to read it. I'm just not going to read it. Huh. We say that was such a good chapter. Let's keep going because I'll bet there's going to be more good. And I think that's really important. I think that's really important. You know, in the Bible, in the book of Philippians, it actually tells us that exact thing. It tells us not to worry about what's behind us. It's just keep going. And then there's another verse, and 
Jeremiah comes in. That's just a, one of mom's favorites. And mm -hmm. you know it. It's on my board, right? It's not. The, the felt board. That's okay. It's Mimi, okay. Will, tell, Mimi will remind you. It starts with, for I know the plan I have for you. You ever heard of me? <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's but all that's right. Okay. But that one. It, what it means is God knows he plans for us, and he gives us hope that it, that it will be for good, right? So now, even though we're really sad that Pastor Brian's going to be leaving, I have hope that the future, the next chapter, is going to be full of great things, because Pastor Brian is going to be able to help more people in different ways, and now we're going to get to work with Pastor Sherry, and we can work together with her to share God with so many other people, just in different ways than we did with Pastor Ryan. What do you think? Does that sound, sound like a good way to move forward, to have hope for good things? What do you think? Do you want to pray with me? Yes, sure. Dear God, Dear God, in all of the change in life, in all of the change in life, and especially with this new change in pastors right now. In this new change in pastors now. Please help us. Please help us. To remember to have hope. To remember to have hope. Because we know that there will be good in the future. No, because you've told us. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh. Bye, Pastor Brian. <laughs> Tell him. You did? You Tell Pastor Brian. Say, we wish you the best. Bye, Pastor Brian. We wish you the best. Bye. Bye.
Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 through 34. He also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. And when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God indeed. So this is my last sermon with you all. And um, because I like benedictions, I decided my sermon is going to be a bit of a benediction. And uh, you also might know that I, I like to kind of do things poetically sometimes. So if that annoys you, this is the last time you have to put up with that. But this is what I would like to leave you with. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Seeds are planted, they die, they're resurrected. And new life springs forth. May you be blessed with faith such that you seek what is to come. Don't be so caught up in the death of a church that you stop seeking the resurrection that awaits. The reign of God's love is dynamic. It grows from a small seed into something living and giving. May you be blessed with eyes that don't disregard the small and the simple. You may be surprised to see the kingdom of heaven is blooming right there. The kingdom of God is transforming. It doesn't stay the same, but it bursts forth with new life. May you be blessed with desire for new life to transform the church. Join in with what the Holy Spirit is already doing to reform the community. The reign of God's love is life-giving. It seeks to bring shelter and respite to any bird that comes to its perch. May you be blessed with open arms to welcome all who come through these doors. You mirror the reign of God's love when the church building becomes place of respite and love. The kingdom of God is unexpected. A mustard seed grows a weed that could never rival a tree. May you be blessed with surprise that God works in ways that you wouldn't imagine. Be mindful that God can create a savior from a poor carpenter and a world-changing movement from a small group of twelve. The reign of God's love is growing. Stagnation is death and is against the very nature of a plant. May you be blessed with a thirst for God so you may grow in God's love. As plants grow with water, so a soul grows when nourished with God's grace. The kingdom of God reaches out to others. Its roots sink deeper and its branches multiply. May you be blessed with discontent. Faith isn't to stay on the surface. Grow deep and wide, plant and reap, and refuse to be self-serving. The reign of God's love is community. The soil, the water, the sun, and even the birds all do their part to grow the seed. So may you be blessed with a community with a variety of gifts and backgrounds 
We were created to be in community, and each one has a part to play to allow each one to thrive. The kingdom of God is a mystery. Our, wor our words point to a reality that is always beyond our grasp. May you be blessed with humility, knowing that God will never fit in your box. Be okay with questions more than answers. Be willing to admit you may be wrong. Be willing to love anyway. May God bless you with a holy push beyond these walls. Don't give up on mission and outreach. Doing so announces the death of a church. May God bless you with a servant's heart. May your service show the love of God that is within you. Doing so will show the world that you follow Jesus. May God bless you with a holy fire to do love. Don't give up on justice and peace. Doing so avoids the biblical call to shalom, to wholeness. May God bless you with a spirit of submission. Give all that you are to God. Doing so empowers you to be holy you. May God bless you with a spirit of boldness. Don't give in to the fear of not having enough. Doing so limits your imagination for what God can do through you. May God bless you with humility. Seek to be last and lowly. Doing so will show that you stand in solidarity with all whom God loves. May God bless your teamwork with Pastor Sherry, that all the gifts of the church work in harmony to bless Rome and beyond. May God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit the creator, redeemer, and sustainer so abundantly bless you that your faith shines in a dark world. That your mustard seed faith grows large and branches come forth to shelter all in God's love. And that you follow the ways of Jesus to find salvation. And that you are reminded that you were made by love, in love, to love, be loved. Amen. So we're going to come together now and play uh, an, a song that is near and dear to my heart, and I think it, it works on a few different levels. One, oh, well, first of all, the song calls us forth uh, into the unknown where God is there, God is holding us together. So that's the, the feeling that I feel right now. And in the transition that you are also going through, you may also feel that. And also, it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty good song. I didn't think about this until today, but it's a pretty good song for the invitation of baptism. We'll experience in a little bit.
join me. Gracious and loving God, you call us beyond our comfort zones, but you promise to always be with there and guide us where we feel that maybe our feet may fail, that we're reaching into deep, deep water. We're uncertain about the future. God, you meet us there. So inspire us again today, comfort us and hold us and push us out into the great unknown, knowing and trusting that you will be our God. Amen. So now we get to uh, participate in the sacrament of baptism. And so I'm going to call Levi and Dylan and David to come forward.
Actually, we're going to come down here. Clear about the So, for those of you who are just commenting, follow along with this slide. It would help if you could all hear me, right? So yeah, we will have the, the there will be some call and responses on the screen. There's gonna be some responses from all of you guys. So brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. And all of this, God's gift, which is offered to us without Christ. On behalf of the whole church, I ask all of you now, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? And if so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives each of you? to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. If so, say, I do. Excellent. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your full trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say, I do. This is, uh, this is a question for uh, Danielle and Tasha in particular, and the parents of the parents of, of everybody here. But will you nurture these children in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, say I will. <laughs> now to the congregation, as you get to take vows to. Do you, as the body of Christ, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ, if so, say we do? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these children here and now before you? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these children with a community of love and forgiveness, that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them, that they will be the true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. So let us now join together in pressing the Christian faith, which is found in both the Old and the New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of our So friends, the Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those of the ark through water. And after the flood, you sent in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. The children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of the womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection, to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. 
Part your Holy Spirit and bless this gift of water and those who receive it to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives. That dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, the eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. David, the Holy Spirit, work within you that being born through the blood of the Spirit, you may become a faithful disciple. There you go. Now, friends, it is our joy to welcome our brothers in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. So members of the household of God, I commend to you, these children, and to your care, do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you we welcome you with Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And for you who are baptized, the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you, that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may live in grace and peace. So let's welcome Levi, Dylan, and David. <laughs> Thank you. 
We'll move ahead to our service of Holy Communion. And if uh, you came into the church, you're probably given one of these. Um, if you don't have one, raise your hand and we'll try to get somebody to get one for you. Terry doesn't have one. I think there's a couple in the front row who don't have one. Uh, can somebody rectify that? John, you got it? Okay. Again, the uh, responses will be listed up on the screen. So I'm going to start us on page 13. So I don't know where that, it, Bob, that would start as the Lord be with you. Because we've already done a lot of confessing here. Thank you. Friends, the Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth, and with all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. The baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Delivered us from slavery to sin and death. And made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. I guess I don't need this mic. I just realized that. You all are probably like, what is he doing? Friends, on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks to God. And he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and he gave thanks to you, O God. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take and drink all of you. This is my blood poured out for you for the new covenant, for the forgiveness of sins, for all who are here and for all who are to come. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves and praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. For it's your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And those who are watching us online, and on those gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his first disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, if you take the cup, if you lift up the top film, That'll give you access to the wafer. The body of Christ broken for you. Glory to God. Amen. And then you could take uh, this pull tab here. And that'll get you to the cup. This is the blood of Christ which is shed for you. Glory to God. Amen.
And now comes the part of the service where we talk about our offering and my standard disclaimer. And if this has annoyed you this whole time, this is the last time you get to hear it. But my standard disclaimer is that our offering is not our admission price into church this morning. Our offering is not um, a fundraising effort, but our offering is a means of giving back to God because God has blessed us. And so we give back a portion of God to show our gratitude and thanks. If you are here this morning, you are not required to give an offering, but if you choose to do so and you have not already, there are two plates as you go out from the service today that you can do that. If you would prefer to give online, we have uh, partnered with a company called Tidely. And so you'll see up on the screen, there's a web address up top or a QR code if you have a smart device. That'll take you to the website where you can give directly to Rome First UMC. The other two QR codes, you can download the app, which I've used for the past year and love. And if neither of those options are good for you, if you still would like to donate, you can mail checks to 400 North George Street in Rome, New York, 13440. And with that, let us sing our doxology. <laughs>
I'd like to give uh, prompts to the praise band who uh, practiced this song without me uh, because of scheduling conflicts and uh, just did a phenomenal job. This is the sort of first time playing these songs together. <laughs> um, so, I would just like to leave you with a benediction and the benediction that I, I give you, and then uh, I, have a, I have one last quick song that I want to play. So, the benediction, of course, is. May the love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you now and forevermore. Amen. We're singing to you first. Oh, yeah, you're singing to me first. I'm sorry. Hey! 